In this video, we're going to go over some of the features and the installation process for our aluminum 240Z style rear bumper. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that it's a one piece instead of the OEM three piece bumper. Some of the bumperettes and rubber pieces are removed to make it slim and sleek. It's also aluminum, so it's much lighter than the factory bumper. We've also made this one with some features that make it easier to put on a 260 and a 280Z because, as you know, the 260 and the 280, especially the 280s, come with the larger 5 mile an hour bumpers, and often most Z owners want to slim those down uh, to put something more like the 240Z style on there. Um, one of the things that you'll notice when we go to put it on the, the car is that we change these inside radiuses a little bit over the factory so that way when you tuck it in nice and tight to the car, um, it actually fits the car better than the OEM one. So um, we're going to go take this out to the 280Z parts car and we're going to show you some of the, the brackets and, and how this thing installs and fits up. So here we are out at the back of the 280Z parts car that we're going to install this on. Um, I've already put on the two brackets that go on the car. You can see this one here. And this is a 78 280Z. And you have the factory bumper mounting bolt here. We utilize that hole. And then you have a second one here on a 76 to 74 so 74 to 76 this side's going to look the same and it's actually going to be the same thing on the right side let's see if we can see it over here whereas that where that bracket is it's the same on a 74 76 but on the 77 through 78 it has the other mounting point right below it so we're not using the mounting points that are different we're just using the mounting points that are actually the same on the 74, 5, 6, 7, and 8. You can see it there. So I've got those on there, tightened up. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put um, some brackets onto our bumper. And so inside here, you can see I've already got this one sitting in there. And it's slotted, so you can move it side to side. And this is on the driver's side. And on the driver's side, you can see further out on the driver's side, there's just a, a screw with a nut on that side and a button head. Um, this is also a prototype bumper. So on actual production bumper, like it's gonna be cosmetically better. And uh, a couple of these little holes that we were doing for some testing and uh, uh, imperfections that are in this wouldn't be on a production one just to point that out so the reason we have these two is so that way it looks symmetrical right to left because um, on the driver's side your bracket goes here and this is just a screw head that goes in so it has that nice symmetry because on the passenger side your uh, screw head goes there oops for the bracket and then this one is just there again for that cosmetic symmetry so when you look at the back bumper you have the two and the two that are evenly spaced so let's look again you can see the direction of the l bracket for the driver's side and for the passenger side and so this is specific for the 260 and the 280 um, at the time of this video, we're still working on the mounting brackets for the, the rear 240Z front bumper. And you'll see that in a video, in a later video. So now that those are on there, I'm going to position this onto the car. So this part is, is definitely a two person job, especially if you're trying to maintain the cosmetic integrity of the car so you can have person holding the bumper on each side to ensure you're not going to scratch it. Um, in this case, I'm not worried about it, so I'm just going to lift it on there. Normally, um, I'm going to grab this side first, but we'd have somebody on the other side holding it to ensure that we're not 
scratching up the paint and also on the inside leg here on both sides it's usually good to have a thin towel um, when you're sliding it on so that way you don't uh, scratch the paint so um, again these brackets that are in here slide left to right and then when you attach it here they actually slide in and out so we can get this position and again if I need to move that bracket, I can. These aren't completely tight, they're just a little bit snug. So now that it's sitting in place, normally you'd have a second set of hands. And then I'm gonna take the uh, M5 screw and nut, and I'm gonna put it through these two slotted brackets that are now lined up. So you can see the slotted bracket on the car, and then you can obviously see the slotted bracket here. Those two are gonna line up and this screw is gonna go in between. I'm gonna do that on both sides and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, so now I got the bumper just sitting on here. Those screws are in, but they're not tight. So you can see I can adjust this in and out and fine tune the spacing. I want this to be off the back roll pan. So we come around to the side here. You can see that we can get it really tight and so what we've done on this bumper is we've curved and put a radius on the inside edge of the bumper in order to have it hold tight. But the whole bumper doesn't curve. So the actual outside of the bumper is straight. And then when you're coming down and looking over the top here, we've tightened up this radius. So on a factory bumper, you have a pretty large gap right there. And so we've tightened that up and uh, gives you the opportunity to have this nice and snug into the side of your car. You can also space it out. Here I'm shoving it back a little bit. If you want a little bit larger gap, you can do that as well. And so you slide it in and out, determine where you want it. Once you've determined the, the depth of it, you want to snug it up just a little bit to hold it there so it's not moving. One thing to also keep in mind is, is that you have a gap here on the side. It gets smaller as you push it in, it gets bigger as you push it out. And in addition to that, since these brackets are slotted, you want to make sure that the bumper is centered left to right and you don't have a no gap on this side and a larger gap on the other side. So once you've done that, then I'm going to show you um, what we're going to do to attach this front edge. So on the 280Z, you've got the, the mounting hole for the, the factory bumper that's quite far to the rear. And it's just really not a good point to uh, secure this front leg. And so what we've done is we've added a hole up here in the front and we're going to uh, mark the car and then we are going to drill a hole and install uh, the provided riv nut. Um, if you're unfamiliar with the riv nuts, we have a video um, on our webpage that talks about different tools and how to install those. So go ahead and take a look at that in our installation video section. Um, and one of the things that I like about uh, this is it makes it nice and easy to install uh, and remove once you have it completed the first time. So. Uh, next step, I'm going to show you how uh, I set this and marked it uh, to give you an idea how to do it. So on this one, I like the look where it's nice and tucked and have less of a gap versus a little more than a gap. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this in uh, just a little bit more. But um, again, you want to make sure that you have that set so that way you're, it's not crooked with one side in tight and the other side sticking out. And so... Um, one real good way to make sure this is straight, because again, these aren't super tight back here, so I have a lot of pivot in it still, and obviously this isn't secured up here. So one good way to ensure that it's uh, even to the other side at least, is measuring off the top of this to your body line. Um, however, you want to make sure that it's straight, assuming unless you want it at an angled uh, dip where you could, you know, angle this down a little bit or up. That's uh, up to you for the look and the lines that you want. If you wanted it straight, um, one of the things what I like to do is 
Um, just throw a little level on it. The caveat to this is that your car has to be on flat ground. Ours happens to be on a trailer, which the trailer is leveled, and the car's sitting pretty level. And so, um, you know, I can set this on here, get the bubble, le bubble leveled, and then once that was there, I was stuck a pick into this hole and put a small mark on the car and uh, scribe that. And then um, in addition to that, I also measured from my mark to the body line just to ensure that they were the same from side to side because I don't want to make a, a crooked mark, crooked bumper. And so um, you, it's probably not necessary, but one of the nice things about a center punch is it helps uh, get your drill bit started in the right spot. So center punch for our drill bit. And um, so one of the things you're gonna wanna be aware of too is that it's not real close, but you have your fuel tank that mounts in there and the other side your fuel neck. So you wanna be aware of where your interior structure is. So that way you're not going to uh, inadvertently drill past where you need to and drill into something. So um, I've got this mark here. I'm going to then drill it for our M6 rib nuts. I believe a rib, the M6 rib nut is a 0.348. So you want to get a drill bit that's just right about there. So that way when you slide it in, um, the rib nuts not too loose. So when you crimp it, it uh, has a nice tight hold. So now that I've got that marked, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna drill them. I'm gonna install the rib nuts. If you're unfamiliar how to do that again, we have another video you can take a look at for that. And then once they're drilled and the rib nuts are installed, um, we're gonna go to the next step. So here we have the rib nuts that are installed. This one here on the driver's side. Uh, passenger side's installed too. Um, on the passenger side, there is the inner wall is pretty close and so we ended up just drilling through that too and so the uh, provided screws that we're going to use are pretty long and so again if you find that um, once you install these or if you're installing them they're going to be too long uh, you can trim them down uh, it's a good idea to run the nut on first before you trim it so that way when you thread it off if there's a burr or something on the the end threads you can uh, you know essentially re-thread it when you thread it off so it doesn't give you trouble threading it back in so um, we have this guy recommend using a uh, little Loctite probably or something on the threads so that way you don't ever worry about them backing out on this usually blue uh, works pretty good so we've got a couple of these rubber uh, spacers and there's a little valley in one side and a little pocket, I guess, and then flat on the other. I like to put the two pockets next to each other. And when we put them in here and then tighten them, they mushroom out. So you can actually use this um, to adjust your width here and still have it nice and snug um, with a rubber isolator. So <clears throat> let me show you what I'm talking about there. And because this is... Um, still able to rotate. I'll rotate this down where I have more room, put these in, slide it up to here, you know, move it up, line it up, we'll thread it in. Um, again, you want to be careful that when you're doing that, you're being aware of your paint so that way you're not on the way up scraping up the paint on the side of your car. So, so we'll go ahead and do that. Slide those in, here we come up, working on lining it up to our rib nut, there we go, getting that started. So I've got a little bit of a decent gap here, but that's on purpose because I'm going to uh, tighten this down and it's gonna mushroom this rubber isolator and pull this tighter. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it on this side first, and it'll actually shift the whole bumper to the other side as I center it, and that'll give me a little more room to be able to get the isolators in on the passenger side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, jump on the passenger side, and then uh, let you take another look at it. All right, so here we have the rear bumper all secured. 
Um, we've got the front edges tightened down. Uh, you can keep tightening these until this actually even crashes into the fender, but um, they'll drop a Loctite will ensure they don't back out. And uh, I've just compressed those rubber spacers and this thing's nice and tight. Uh, you're gonna back here even, you know, start pushing on the bumper. We're shaking the whole car. Um, I have gone through and I've tightened all this up in order to secure that. Again, this is a prototype. It's got uh, cosmetic blemishes on it, but shows you the, the shape and the fitment of how it's gonna end up. This one is raw aluminum. They're available powder coated black. So you can get it black, or if you wanna, with this option, you can leave it as is. Recommend putting uh, some kind of clear coat on it, or if you're gonna paint it to body match, that's great too. These are available from skillard.com. Please email us at sales at skillard.com if you have any questions.